Lord, what fools these mortals be. One of Shakespeare's most notable observations on the folly of human beings. And now New Yorkers get to see that played out for free under the stars at Shakespeare in the Park's new production of the classic romance, A Midsummer Night's Dream. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. And I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee. And they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep and sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. The Delacorte Theater in Central Park has been transformed into an enchanted forest full of mirth, comedy, and lovesick couples. The task of directing this merry band of lovers has fallen into the very capable hands of Lear de Besonnet, the resident director at the Public Theater and founder of its groundbreaking public works. She joins me now, along with six-time Tony nominee, actor Danny Burstein, known best for playing Tevye in Fiddler on the Roof last year. And amid Summer Night's Dream, he takes on the role of an amateur actor who makes a real donkey of himself. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much. It's great, great to be you. here. So this is just such an iconic play that's so well known to so many people. But I'm wondering, what was it that made you feel like this is a really good play to have in Shakespeare in the Park now? Well, the Delacorte space is, I think, as Danny can attest to, it is really a space unlike any other. Being under that open sky with 2,000 New Yorkers mm -hmm. is it's a particularly special and kind of live experience and uh, for me Midsummer is the perfect show to do there. It is a beautiful play. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful place to work. Um, I've been in 16 Broadway shows and I can tell you there is nothing like the Delacorte Theatre. The atmosphere, the love of the people, the love of the people uh, who come to see it yeah. and the people who are in the show as well. Do you feel it in a different way because you're in such a smaller more intimate and yet open space? Yes, I think so. I mean, it's also about being under the elements. I mean, we have, on nights that it rains, we still do the show, mm -hmm. uh, and audience members come with their ponchos. You can't have umbrellas in there, and people put on their ponchos yeah. and, and stay. I did that. I saw it in the rain, yeah. and it was incredibly impressive. You could see the rain coming down. Yeah, and yet... the audiences are intrepid. They yeah. really want to be there. Absolutely, and Midsummer is a perfect comedy mm -hmm. in that it not only is it hilarious, but also it has really great depths of truth, of human truth. That's why it's so funny. Part of our predicament that we are all in mm -hmm. is that that feeling of desperately wanting something that we can't have and relentlessly pursuing something that we are foolish to pursue. Mm -hmm. And that those themes play out over the course of these four different stories. So you can see them refracted against each other. And I think it's it's really satisfying to know that you're not alone in being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the questions uh, in terms of being an actor on this particular stage, yeah. I thought was so beautiful was the not only diversity of the cast in terms of ethnicity, but also in terms of um, the history that people might have in terms of their familiarity with acting, the age of people. I mean, this is really like a broad group that you've got. Does that make it a unique experience? It is a unique experience. I think there are four generations of actors in the show. Our youngest is seven, and I think our oldest is 93. And everybody brings their own wonderful sense of self mm -hmm. and uh, their past to the play. And we learn from each other, and we respect each other. and. It's a great group of people and, uh, you know, truly an honor to be there every single night. I understand that when you're off stage, you're under a very special gaze. We are. <laughs> Actually, right, on, <laughs> right underneath us are, is a family of raccoons living <laughs> under the stage. Yeah. They're all there and they actually come out at about 7, 7.15. And In time for the show. Walk, yeah, and are, and are backstage walking around. Yeah, have they ever out come out on stage? Yes. Apparently they have. In fact, yeah. one was on the show, was in the show the other day. It was in one of the trees <laughs> when the show was going on. And in past productions, uh, raccoons have come out and oh. actually come at the edge of the stage and watched the scenes a little bit. So this is truly bit. a theater for all New Yorkers. It, it is. Tell me. 
this play, of course, comes juxtaposed against Julius Caesar, which got a lot of attention in the national news media for some feeling it was controversial. Um, I'm wondering if that was part of the reason why it was chosen, so that it juxtaposed, and you had these two that balanced out and made sort of a more, I want to say, fluid or peaceful mm. experience. It was planned long long before, so I think that there wasn't a purposeful juxtaposition there, um, though I think it is, it, you know, perhaps a happy accident. Okay, all right. Well, a happy accident, which I think, again, fits in perfectly with A Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes. Yeah, it is a beautiful play, and it is a beautiful production, mm -hmm. and there, <laughs> without sounding too silly, there's a lot of love in the room. Oh, oh there really is. Yes. And there's creativity and, uh, and beauty, and it all become, it is all there because of Lear. All right, well, listen, I want to thank you both for coming down to speak with us. Really appreciate it. And I really do hope that uh, more New Yorkers get out to go see the play. Yeah, thank I you. Hope so too. Thank you.